A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N, O, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. I have a dream today. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. The United Nations finds itself confronted today with the gravest crisis in its existence. It is evident now that the world entirely is at war. Yesterday, December 1941, won't you come home with me? It was 1941, and the small farming community of Richland was basking in modest prosperity. A new grade school had been built, and other community infrastructure improvements were underway. The town of 240 people was proud of the sacrifices it had made to survive the years of the Great Depression, and was looking ahead to its continued success. But the greatest sacrifice was yet to come. World War II, the war to end all wars. Like all communities, Richland was committed to the war effort. Its young men registered for the draft. The community purchased saving stamps and war bonds. December 16, 1942, a small plane circled the skies above Richland. Its passengers, A.E.S. Hall, Gilbert Church, and Lieutenant Colonel Franklin T. Mathias surveyed the land. Only weeks earlier, the first successful test of a nuclear chain reaction had been conducted. A site for a secret war project was being selected. At that moment, Richland would change forever. Within three months, Richland and the surrounding communities of White Bluffs and Hanford were served papers of eviction. Residents had no choice but to abandon their homes and make way for the secret project. In its place, a government-owned community had to be assembled to support the construction and operation of a plutonium processing plant, the substance needed in the assembly of a nuclear bomb. The race was on. Time restraints were critical. E.I. DuPont, an engineering and explosives company, was selected as the prime contractor for the construction of the plant. DuPont estimated it would need housing to accommodate 6,500 employees, support personnel, and family members. DuPont contacted Alvin Pearson, uh, a noted Spokane uh, architect, to, um, and he literally had 48 hours to make, it, you know, make up his mind to provide a, a community of, oh, 4,000 homes. And um, so he came up with this uh, unique design, you know, giving them alphabet designation, you know, A homes, you know, B homes, uh, so forth, all the way down the line. DuPont wanted to kind of offer respite, you know, it was a very strict military atmosphere, and so they wanted a community that was totally, you know, opposite. Now, in the, the core of Richland, you know, the, the part that Pearson was uh, responsible for designing, it reflects you know, uh, what urban designers call communitarian values, and uh, he uh, he set up you know small little neighborhoods you know where people could interact. You, know, you uh, didn't have to drive a car, or even have a car, you know, to interact with your neighbors and you know meet them at schools or in the, the you know neighborhood shopping areas. Um, um, you know, they had the, the large communal you know, uh, backyards. And so he, in each section of town, he would put you know, small commercial centers, uh, usually a supermarket and a number of uh, uh, stores, uh, you know, like uh, barber shops, beauty shops, drug stores, uh, and the like, you know, were also clustered you know, um, in these neighborhoods. Homes went up quickly as DuPont constantly added to its original estimate. Ultimately, the population count would be revised to 16,000 residents. All needs were factored, including streets, sidewalks, utilities, municipal buildings, medical facilities, schools, and businesses. Um, well, that's all part of Pearson's design. He, you know, he took into 
uh, count uh, the needs for medical care, fire and police protection, social and community, recreational needs, um, um, and you know it was a complete town. It was, uh, it was when he turned it over to uh, to Dupont. You know it was uh, all set to go. Each home was designed with a letter of the alphabet for easy recognition. Originally, the first homes to be constructed were the A and B duplexes. Other homes quickly followed to satisfy the expanding population needs. There were about 13 designs in World War II. About 3,700 homes were built. And out of the 13 designs, um, a couple were dormitories, the J and K, which try to get, which were to provide accommodations for you know single personnel. Uh, you had the uh, eight, you know, a ABC homes, as I like to call them, eight different designs, and then you had the three prefabs, the one, two, and three bedroom designs. But there were three classes that were constructed in uh, that uh, Second World War period, and uh, they were differentiated by, by size and therefore by cost. You know? And, uh, you know, the A's and B's are in the class one, and the, you know, the F's and H's are in class two, and the uh, the D's and E's and G's um, and L's are in the third class, you know. The so-called, you know, management, the junior executive, the management class g got a lot of the homes uh, east of GW Way, between GW Way, which was the north-south arterial, which it still is today, and the, uh, and the Columbia River. And although Pearson's original hit, once again, he had to compromise, another thing he had to compromise on, he wanted a kind of a democratic mixture. He came from this, these planner architect uh, school that, you know, d you know, democracy through, you know, through housing. I think Pearson, you know, really did succeed overall in establishing a, a community which had a very low social gradient, you know, people who were at the top of the scale, you know, the most up, upper echelon uh, managers and scientists, you know, were living, you know, literally next door or around the, the corner to people who emptied their waste baskets and, and uh, bagged their food at the supermarket, you know. Well, my, my dad came out, I, I imagine, probably sometime in 1944 and um, worked as a Hanford patrolman and um, lived, you know, in the barracks at Camp Hanford and then when the housing started to become available, he um, was able to get a two-bedroom prefab. Our first side of the prefabs was on George Washington Way as we came into town, and when my dad pointed them out to my mom, she um, was not too thrilled. She called them a uh, cracker box, and <laughs> he was uh, not real pleased about that because he thought that was kind of a neat little house, and really it was. I don't think she minded the prefab once we got in. I think her first impression of those flat roofs is what struck her and made her, you know, refer to it as a cracker box. She couldn't believe she was going to live in a cracker box. Many more of the employees had families than was originally anticipated. As waiting lists for homes grew, single room apartments were canceled and made room for 1,800 prefabricated homes as overworked employees were eager for any available dwelling they could call home. You kind of took what you could get. And then, uh, as I remember, there was a list there where you could try to upgrade yourself if you wanted to you get on that list. You had to wait to get a house that was uh, very limited. First of all, we had to wait for him to get his Q clearance. And then we had to wait for the house. So it was a number of months before we could get a house and move to Richland. I know that every Friday night we'd go down to that... Uh, a uh, bulletin board that was outside of uh, a building just off Jadwin there to see what houses were available uh, to move into and we never did move. <laughs> My dad came home from work um, at the Remington Arms when uh, and we were living in Boulder, Colorado and he said DuPont wants me to go out to Washington. My mom says what for? <laughs> and right away and he said, well, uh, they have a, a job going on out there. And Mom says, I'm not going. Dad says, well, I'm going to go. And they had given him tires and gas stamps to get out here because he wanted to drive his own car. And uh, then we 